Okay, so welcome guys. Thank you very much for being here. Sabina Volter, Love Intimacy Coach. And today I have a special guest with me, Holly Abbott, who is a specialist in terms of nutrition, health, gut health, and she helps busy professionals. And if you're one of those busy professionals and you do not want to waste your time and you really want to get healthy, just Holly is the girl that you should really contact with. And I'm super excited for having you here, Holly. So thank you for being here and uh, welcome. How are you today? Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Great. Great. Awesome. So first of all, Holly, I would like you to introduce yourself a little bit and tell us something like, for example, what is your story? What specifically brought you to the place that you are right now, right here? And how, how does that relate to the service that you provide? Yeah, so I am a functional nutritionist and I do focus on gut health um, and that does tie back to really my story and my journey in terms of my health because um, many years ago I, I started, well, I always really had stomach issues, if you will, is what a lot of people like to call it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they progressively got worse, even after I had a colonoscopy and an endoscopy and, mm -hmm. you know, I was told I was fine. I was healthy. I was young. And, and, and I'm like, okay, that sounds great, but I'm having, you know, all of these issues. And, um, it just got to a point where I had even more issues outside of the gut health, where I had chronic headaches and sinus issues. And, mm -hmm. um, I had psoriasis that would flare up really bad mm -hmm. and, um, I had anxiety pretty bad at a certain point and, you know, none of the doctors really helped me. They would just say, you look healthy or, and here's a pill for that. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, I totally get that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like, well, that's not really what I wanted to hear in my late twenties. I'm having to be, to take a pill to go to the bathroom or take a pill to, you know, get my headache to go away, like pain pills. And, um, you know, luckily it, there was a certain point where I was like, okay, is this what I'm going to have to deal with forever? Like, is this just, mm -hmm. I got, this is just my bad luck. And, you know, luckily I came across a book called the beauty detox. And I don't even remember why I bought this book in the first place, but, um, I started reading it and she starts talking about our gut health and how your, if your digestion's not working well, this takes away energy from your body to do all the other things it needs to do. Like yeah. make your skin look good, your hair look good, your nails. So she's relating it back to beauty, but it's essentially when your digestion's not working well, all the energy is going there and nothing else gets the energy it needs. Mm -hmm. And, um, so as I'm reading this, I'm seeing all this stuff about gut health, like, and how food affects your gut. And I'm like, oh gosh, this is exactly me because my diet was, was not good at the time. Yeah. Um, I'm from the South. Like I, I used to eat whatever I wanted to, and I didn't gain weight, which is good in a way, but also I didn't really have a motivation to change my eating habits. So I didn't really realize they were that bad until I was reading it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is my, this is my problem. And I think back on it now, none of the doctors asked me what my diet was. None of them asked me, yeah. you know, if I was under stress, none of them mentioned like gut health and the way we talk about it today. And, you know, I slowly started making my own changes and, I started seeing some results from that, you know, some things started subsiding for me, the heartburn, the bloating, uh, constipation, the headache started going away. Mm -hmm. And long story short, this took a while for me because I was on my own. I didn't have a coach or anything at the time. Okay. Really the kind of the last transformation for me to get to where I am today was I did actually work with a functional nutritionist and a coach myself to kind of do that last this hurdle, I guess. And this was before I decided to go into functional nutrition and, um, just seeing how I was able to heal my body and change things naturally without any pills using food as medicine. I just was like, I have to share this like with the world, like more people should know yeah. about it. You shouldn't yeah. have to like accidentally stumble across it in a book like I did. And so mm -hmm. that kind of led me to, to where I am today. And I, you know, sought out my functional nutrition certification and, um, and yeah, that's what I'm doing now. So, yeah, that's a great story. Uh, you know, um, that really resonates with me as well, because at some point, um, I think that all people in the world, I mean, like, you know, the regular people, they know that if you want to look good and be healthy, you need to pay attention to your diet. 
although no doctor ever says like you know pay attention to like the gluten the the, the dairy products or the the meat that you're getting or whatever in in what times during the day what portions how often they don't say that in fact what you just said and really like kicked me in my in my heart was that you went to the doctor and they the doctors and they never actually you know made any connections with the dot that you should pay attention to your diet none of the doctors because it's very interesting uh i remember having fertility problems um and um my period just was you know totally irregular and I went to my uh, OBGYN and, and she said, like, you know, you, you, you're just going to have, you know, pills, hormonal pills. And I was like, I don't want to take those. It's a bit against my will. I don't want to take those. And she yeah. was like, yeah, but how do you want to regulate that? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. And I just said, no, I'm not going to do that. And, um, and then I started really m- m- paying attention to what do I eat? How often? What kinds of products did I take? Um, and the fertility issues, by the way, were one of the symptoms because I had <laughs> terrible acne. I couldn't sleep. Um, my, I was, you know, the heartburn, um, digestion problems, all of those symptoms that you've actually mentioned, most of them I also experienced. And oh my God, so many women that I work with also experienced that. And we never link that with food, which is wrong because so as, I don't know how do you see that, but um, I see those commercials of products like if you have if you're lactose intolerant, take this. If you're like um, suffering from too much sugar, take that. And it's like taking those supplements to make toxins tolerable. Yeah, and that's insane. That's totally insane. If you're lactose intolerant, you shouldn't have that. Shouldn't. Like, that's your body is literally saying to you, don't eat that. <laughs> yes. It's like, I, I heard some guy say this before. He's like, continuing to eat foods that don't love you back is like staying in a toxic relationship. That's a great, yeah. And exactly. I was like, that's exactly it. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, we continue to do that. Like just, I'll eat this food and I'll suffer with the consequence or I'll take this pill, which is not natural, which also has toxins in it to make me be able to tolerate this mm-hmm. food that I'm not tolerating. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And that that was a great comparison, by the way. Uh, it's like staying in a toxic relationship with food. Yeah. Yes, yes exactly. So, um, what did it take to you or what did you have to do to actually wake yourself up from that? Because it, it's difficult, you know, you go mainstream when you make decisions mm-hmm. like that right? Change, yes. right? Like totally. Um, I can only imagine because it was, for me, it was very difficult. Every family gathering was like, oh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't eat the cake. I've been baking that all night. Why not? And I'm like, I don't need sugar. Sorry. I just don't do those things anymore. <laughs> but how was it for you? Yeah. Like, what did it take for you? What do you have to, what did you have to do to, to, to you know, to be where you are? Yeah. Um, I think for me, you know, I just had enough of the pain, enough of the, okay, you know, maybe this is TMI, but enough of being constipated. Like I want to be able to go to the bathroom without having to take a supplement or take a medicate over the counter medication for it. And I'm tired of having headaches. And so just, I reached a certain point where I was like, okay, enough is enough. And, And I'll say in the beginning, it was hard because my brain was like, I can't do this. Like, I can't let go of my sugar. I can't let go of my, cause I mean, I had sweets like all day long I started the day with a caramel macchiato and a muffin like for years like that was normal so it took you know a little bit for me to change that habit but once I started seeing results that I was feeling better and I was like oh my gosh I don't have to feel I don't need the caffeine and sugar to get going and I don't have a crash every day in the afternoon after I eat lunch And I'm like, I didn't even know that was possible. I thought that was just normal, you know? And so once I think I saw a little glimpse of that, it helped me keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I'm not perfect by any means. Like there's, there's certainly things I still indulge on from time to time, but the difference now is that my gut is in a healthier place. So I can have that every now and then, and it's not going to set me off and like, okay, now I'm not going to go to the bathroom for a week. Like it doesn't do that anymore. So it, it's like, and I know, okay, if I, if I do this too many times, this, I know what that's going to lead to. So I don't, 
you know, splurge every day of the week. Right. Um, but it really just, I had to have enough of the pain. And then honestly, for me, what drives me is just prevention. Like mm -hmm. I see what my grandmother went through. I see what my mom has been through. Oh. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go that route. Like I don't want to develop diabetes. I don't want to develop Parkinson's and all that. And I know that because of the research I've done and because of the training I've done, I know that we have more control than we've been led to believe. And that's, yeah, that's really once you realize like, oh, I do have a lot more control. I mean, of course we can't predict everything that's going to happen to us, but we can try to control what we can control. And, mm -hmm. and so really prevention is, is the other part that drives what I do. I'll say that even prevention is like 75% of success anyway. I mean, if you mm -hmm. want to like really eat garbage, it's like, you know, you have a sports car, beautiful sports car. And how is it that people um, put more love into their cars? Like they have good fuel. They, you know, they really like, they are so polishing this, this, this car yeah. like, with it's love. Fun. And, and how, how is it that, that you treat your body as it was like a garbage can? Like eating junk food. And, and when you eat that kind of food, 40 years of your life, then you have to spend a lot of money to get healthy because the problem is um, you lost your health and now getting it back, it's like sometimes even impossible. It's, sometimes it's really too late. And mm -hmm. I'm, really, I'm really excited about thinking that right now having a good meal, really good healthy meal that will really make me feel energized, make me feel going, that I'm vital and, and my body just loves it. Um, that's an investment. It will always give you back a lot of, you know, good stuff that can come to your life. And, and yeah, that's yeah. very enthusiastic when I think about that. And um, I have another question for you, you know, and what is, um, what is, what is it that frustrates you the most today when it comes to food? health what, what what is it that frustrates you when you like look at the culture outside and and you think oh my god this is painful <laughs> uh yeah well that's an easy one um for me the frustrating thing is just conventional medicine oh. our healthcare system it's broken it it is not helping people in the way that it should um you know fun the functional approach is that which is kind of the what i practice is we look, we want to address the root causes, like what brought someone to where they are, whether they want to lose weight, whether they have an autoimmune condition or whether they have gut issues, mm -hmm. acne, whatever it is, we want to find the root causes. Otherwise you're not solving it. Right. Yeah. And conventional approaches, well, let me find a prescription to give you, or let's do a surgery and just take your uterus out. I'm like, what? Yeah. yeah. When, and without trying anything natural first, like mm -hmm. the patient's not giving any other options. And to me, that's just, that's just wrong. And, you know, I don't blame the doctors because that's the training they go through. It's not really their fault. That's how they're trained, but that system needs to be changed in my opinion, because yeah. people are not they're not being empowered in their health that, Hey, you have some control over this. And, um, I'll tell you a quick story of like mm -hmm. my, um, my ex and he's, he's still my good friend. He was diagnosed with cancer in 2020 and mm -hmm. he went to his first oncologist appointment and, um, he came back and, uh, you know, I had bought all these books about, you know, how you can eat for, you know, um, curing cancer and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And he came back. And so I'm like, okay, what did the doctor tell you? Like, what did he tell you, you need to eat? Let's like, go get that stuff. And he's like, oh, he just told me to eat whatever I want as long as I eat something. Oh my God. And I was like, I'm like, eat whatever you want. Like you have cancer. Like that's right. the last thing. one of the elements that led to that. Right. So yes, yes. Wow. And so it that. just infuriated me because I was like, there's so many people that they're not in a place to know that they have these options. They don't understand how food can heal their body. And thankfully, you know, he's smarter than that. And, and we, he knew not to just go eat, you know, Dunkin' Donuts every day. Mm -hmm. Um, but that right there is what kind of drove me into this because I'm, I'm just like, people are not getting the right information in the right direction. And they, they're not empowered in their health. They're, they're not being told, Hey, you can 
positively affect this cancer diagnosis with your nutrition, with your lifestyle, if you want to. Like, sure, you can do this treatment as well, but you can do this at the same time and it could benefit you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. Um, Yeah, this is a great story. It's really painful. Um, And um, I really share some very similar observations in terms of, you know, sexuality. Uh, Like my clients actually ask me, you know, I had a visit at my OBGYN and I'm not having orgasms. And she or he said to me, maybe we can put some um, pumping hyaluronic acid to your G-spot so that you can have some orgasms. And I'm like, when I'm listening to these stories, I'm like, what? And I'm asking my clients, have you ever practiced on your own? And they, like nine out of 10, no, I haven't ever. And I'm like, why would you pump something into your body if you even don't know where it is? Do right. You, do you yeah, really think, even know. Yeah. Like, do you really think it will make you like super orgasmic or whatever? It will not. If you don't know how to use it, <laughs> how can it be activated? Yeah. And and this is insane. And um, I think that health industry and beauty industry mm-hmm. are one of those who are the most manipulative um, of all of them. Yeah, and I agree. yeah. In terms of health industry, that's that's my thinking right now at this point. After you know, getting through all of those experiences by my own, it's like they. It's not like they are like bad to the bone, but they just want to earn, and we vote with our money. So if we buy junk, they will produce more junk. Oh so, yes, yeah. yeah. And it will be advertised and we will be seeing all these happy people on these commercials. Of course, they are slim, like having right. big burgers and drinking Coca-Cola. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they're slim. They have beautiful It doesn't food. affect them at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, this is like, uh, like a worldwide hypnosis in there. And I know yeah. what hypnosis is because I'm a hypnotherapist right now and I know how it works. So and yes. this, is, this is like painful. It's really painful. What pain, what, what really, um, aches me when I see a child and a mother and she gives candy to them. It's like, you've been so good. Have a candy. And I'm like, oh, oh, my, God. Yeah. Yes. oh my God, what are you doing to That's this child? Sure. Mm-hmm. We've been trained that the sweets are the reward that like, and so you grow up, mm-hmm. you're seeking that same thing. And it's, it's like wired in you. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, it's everywhere. We're, we're, by the time we're old enough to see a commercial it's wired in us basically exactly yeah exactly and we can really tell ourselves that no i don't buy that no i don't believe in that but then again why do we buy it it's already already in there it's like we have this positive association so it, it works and we don't know uh how strongly we are being affected by Mm-hmm. those marketing producers and and I'm really uh I'm really very frustrated and angry at them because um you know let's take for as an example like cigarettes I mean we know it's not healthy like mm-hmm. all the world knows it's not healthy you can have lung cancer you can like literally die very early on but then marketing it was it was incredible I really must really uh, Respect to those people that marketed cigarettes. Yeah. Like in the beginning yeah. of 20th century, all men needed to, you know, we want them to smoke. What can we do? Let's make commercials. Like, you know, cowboys do that. And it's so super manly and it's just, you know, it's, it's modern and whatever. And after that, how can we influence women to actually smoke? Mm-hmm. But then in the 20s and 30s, you know, those moments when women actually went out the streets. And there was suffrage, the, the, the feminism rose up and, and those commercials were like, you want to be like a man, you have to smoke. Mm-hmm. And, and it worked. And yeah. then the last, the last group was children, actually. And, you know, when you look like those cigarettes, like a camel, they have a camel on the cover. It's mm-hmm. just a camel. It looks kind of friendly. And yeah. the Marlboro, uh, I remember those commercials of Marlboro, like these cowboys and, you know, this adventure and whatever. And like, be a young boy and see this. And I want to be like that. 
And furthermore, mm-hmm. those, those old stars, the noir movies, they all smoke like hell. Yeah. And at some point, which is very interesting because there is no person on the planet that is a parent and previously was this a rebel. And now, so I smoke. I'm a rebel, you know, and I don't care about anything. There's mm-hmm. no person on this planet who is a parent and would say to his or her child, like, I want you to be that rebellious. Have a cigarette. This is very interesting. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I know. It's yeah. but it you know, is. in terms of health, I see very similar thing. And we think it's just it's just good. It's good for us. It, it's not. Anyway, um, um I just kind of, you know, uh I went too far for for a moment, but let's get No, back. no, you didn't. It's true. It's all it's yeah. all the it's all in the marketing. The marketing is very genius to get us to continue yeah. to do unhealthy things. It's just it, it's what it is. You have to be very cognizant of that so you're not sucked into it, really. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, um I I deal with sexuality. I'm a love and intimacy coach. I help most right. women. And uh, I would like to know your opinion, Holly, on how does gut health and food and nutrition influence sexual life and relationship, if it does at all? And what's your what's your opinion on that? I think it definitely affects it. Um, I can just speak to my own experience of the several years that I had gut issues ongoing. Um, you know, I was in a relationship and, you know, it certainly affected my relationship. It affected when I, when I was dating new people, because you, I mean, when you feel bloated, when you feel weighed down, when you haven't gone to the bathroom for three days, like you're definitely not thinking about sex, you know, yeah, sure. You're, you know, and you're definitely not wanting to do that because you're like, I feel gross. I don't feel confident in myself. I don't feel sexy. Yeah. It's like um, body confidence. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, even like going out like to, to places, you know, I can remember most times we would go to dinner. I, my digestion didn't work so great. So afterwards I felt like crap. Usually it was like, Oh, I feel like I have a cow sitting in my stomach, even though I didn't eat that much. And so I just wanted to go home and lay down like, and not move. Like that's, that's all I wanted to do, which is not very fun when you're in your twenties, you know, like that's very unusual. Um, so it definitely affects it. I think, I think the main thing would just be your, you know, your confidence, your, um, you know, your view of your body and how you feel about your body Mm -hmm. and just how you feel like, you know, do you feel sexy? Do you feel confident? And all that kind of is gone when you're dealing with gut issues all the time, or when you don't feel good about yourself, or you're not feeling good physically. Um, it, it definitely affects it mm. in that way. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that, and I, I really hope that you guys, I, I won't, if you listen to that, really, yeah, sex, relationships, and food are all connected. This, these disciplines, they are all intertwined. They have influence on each other. It's not like you know, if I can fix this one thing that's the end of my problems. It's like, if you fix this one thing, it may help you to fix the other. It might, because they all kind of are intertwined. Intertwined. Um, That's a hundred percent right. I, I, I would like to ask you, you know, is there any kind of advice that you, or maybe differently, what would you like people to start to do in terms of their health or or maybe, and nutrition, and you know that it will work. And if you could give them that advice, you know it will work, you know they would do that, what that advice would be? Um, Like an action they can take or just like where they should start? I'd say like, what do you feel? Where, where does your intuition go to? Like in terms of nutrition and health, uh, what should we all start doing? And if you knew right. that we would start doing that, what that number one thing would be according to you I think the first thing this this may sound weird coming from a nutritionist but i think the one thing that i see a lot that people underestimate is the power of our mind when it comes to our health okay and you know so many people focus on what's wrong and you know, these are all the things wrong with me and this is going to be hard or i can't do this Mm -hmm. And when you focus on that, you're going to stay in that place pretty much. 
Like I see a huge difference in my clients, the ones that come in and they're like, yeah, I want to do the natural approach. I want the functional approach. I don't want to take prescription medicines. And they're like all in Mm -hmm. and they're, they're like trusting the process that this is going to work for them. And guess what? In four weeks, their symptoms are gone. Like symptoms they've had for like a year. Mm -hmm. And I have other clients who they come in and they have all these problems and they want to talk about all the problems and that's fine. We want to understand what they are, but they're almost like married to that identity of like, this is, this is me. I have all these problems. I have hormone issues. I have gut issues. I have this and this and this. And there's like, like, they don't want to let it go. And I get like my anxiety or my hormone issues. And I'm like, you are claiming those things. Do you Mm -hmm. want those things? (laughs) You know, and it's it's our mind and it's how we speak about it. So it's like changing that mindset of like, this is not my anxiety. You know, I'm, I'm letting this go. And as I make these changes, this stuff is going to go away. And so Mm -hmm. it really does start with the mind, um, and being cognizant of like how you're looking at things, because most people are driven by these thoughts that are not good. They're driving them in the wrong direction, but it's because they don't question them. They don't pay attention to them and it continues to drive them. So that's really kind of how you have to start. Yeah. I think this is the basic rule for any kind of changes that you want to make. Yeah. I loved what you say that when you say my gut health, my, like my uh, acne or whatever, it's like, yeah, Yeah. you blame it this way. I, I very often say to my clients who uh, for example, are heartbroken because they um, they just had this terrible divorce or whatever, and they were up. My ex husband, it's like he's not yours. He's not yours anymore. Don't don't right. call him my husband. Don't. It's not. He's not yours anymore. Okay. He never. Yes. He's never been yours. By by the way, but right, right, true. Right. But stop <laughs> talking about him in terms of mine. He's not yours. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and. Um, mindset is the very first thing it's the very first thing always starts it always starts with accepting where you're at what you're having what you're not having because then when you accept that see things as they are you within that context as you are that's the moment where you actually can change that perspective shift it and yeah uh, yeah in in any in any field any area like the mindset is the very first thing i totally agree with that um Mm -hmm. And talking about the practical uh, tips that you can share with us, maybe like connected with women, because you probably most of the times you help women, do you? Yeah, mostly women. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So what are the, the, what's the practical um, tip that you can give to us women? Um, Yeah. So obviously food is powerful. If I can send any message, food literally can heal our bodies, can fuel our bodies, It affects everything from how we feel physically to mentally. And, you know, I I think I just challenge people to look at food as in, what is this doing for me? Mm -hmm. You're eating a bag of chips. What's that doing for you? If you're eating, you know, a green smoothie with, you know, spinach and fruit and maybe some collagen powder, what is that doing for you? Mm -hmm. And when you look at food in that way of like what nutrients are in it and what am I getting from it? You will, you'll change, you'll start slowly changing your choices because if it gets mid afternoon and you're like, I haven't had a vegetable, I haven't had a fruit, have had no real food, no whole Mm -hmm. foods. You're going to feel like crap. First Mm -hmm. of all, you start, you're going to start noticing you feel like crap and you're going to be like, Oh, I need to get this food in my diet because think about it. When you don't have any whole real foods, you've gotten basically zero nutrients in Mm -hmm. eating processed food all day or fried food, uh, fast food. You're literally getting no nutrients and you're, those foods are actually pulling nutrients from your body. So to digest or to process sugar, your body has to use things like magnesium, potassium, and all that. This is how people develop nutrient deficiencies. Yeah. And And that's a big problem. Like, will lead to a whole host of other issues yeah Um, ironic i remember i've read a book uh the thickest book i've ever read um martin caparos wrote the hunger and it was like really obviously this this thick and it was like very big book and one of those chapters that he uh that the author um gave was that in in america in um 
I suppose it was Tahiti or, or somewhere, but America, America was one of those countries where there are, there's the, one of the biggest numbers of really people like really obese. And oh, the problem yeah. is they are, they are obese, but they are, they have so, such a big nutrient deficiency. Nutri yes, yes. And which, which is very ironical, these people die of hunger. Yeah. And just as those people in Asia or um or in South Africa or whatever that they don't they don't have things to eat, but the it's it's so ironic those people from America from those really poor countries they all die from the same reason hunger, which is I'm wow, mm -hmm. yeah because what yeah what what industry give, gives us is not food actually it's not a functional food. <laughs> no, it's not yeah it's not not really food it's all you know <clears throat> uh, chemicals and things we just put together and call it fit, called it food mm -hmm. and the body really doesn't so it's kind of twofold with that what happens is you're eating those foods and the body doesn't really know how to digest them it's not it's not meant to, we're not made to digest those foods well <clears throat> so that starts wreaking havoc on your gut it's causing inflammation mm -hmm. um it's causing leaky gut all the things <clears throat> and when your gut is unhealthy you can't absorb nutrients. So when you do say you do eat healthy foods, you're, you're not able to even break them down well and to get the nutrients from it. And then the other side of it is you're eating foods that don't have any nutrients. So mm -hmm. it's a double whammy. <clears throat> so, cause I've had people who say, well, I changed my diet and I'm still having these issues. And I'm like, yes, because we have to heal the gut first. Yeah. Like, then yeah. You can start changing your diet, but if you never heal the gut, you have to get the gut back to you know, no inflammation, you need to balance your microbiome, all that stuff so that it can do its job of, you know, breaking down the food, absorbing nutrients and your healthy diet, you know, yeah. then has a chance, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. That's very important. What you said. Thank you for that. I remember when I changed my diet, like very drastically. And I remember like for first two up to four weeks, I remember like two, three weeks, something about something around that. It was terrible. Like, I, I, I just think, I, I was thinking to myself, I was supposed to be better and I feel like crap. <laughs> like my oh, yeah. first time in my life, I experienced migraines because, yes. you know, I put away the caffeine, the sugars, um, processed food. And, and I did it all at once. Maybe I should have be a little more gentle. I don't know, but I stayed on the course and I really created for myself every day every morning a green smoothie like spinach a, a fruit um uh kale and, and other stuff like that and I'm, I'm very happy that i did that but the symptoms they got worse in the beginning but then went away never came back my yeah. insomnia was gone my acne was gone my fertility went up uh i feel super sexy and super charged i have this energy that i I even don't know what to do sometimes with it. So uh, it's awesome. But I know I remember that beginning. And I think this is a crucial point to stay in that, like get through that. There is no other way than through. Right. It's, it's, it can be hard if you're, if you're hooked on sugar, hooked on caffeine, and if you need to do one thing at a time, okay. But know that it will, yes, like you said, it will get, it will get worse before it gets better, but it's just your body is, is coming off of that mm -hmm. substance. It's like a drug. I mean, it is really, it, it yeah. affects our body the same way drugs do. And it, it just takes a little bit of time. You're going to have some headaches, but if you can get through that, um, you, you will feel better than you ever thought you could feel like you didn't know you could feel that good. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I, I think that it's a beautiful experience to actually really know how you can feel when you're feeling good because we don't know when our bodies are so um unhealthy we, we don't even feel that it's like i just have these problems with my head i have problems with digestion it's just who i am just who I, what i am and whatever it's like when you get rid of that it's like wow this is how i felt when i was a baby <laughs> Yes. Yes. Cause most people have felt this way for so long. They don't know the difference. They don't know they're missing out on anything really. And I didn't know I was missing out on anything like until, until I saw the other side and I'm like, Oh wow. I don't have to have sugar every two hours. I don't need to have like three cups of coffee a day. 
Yeah. And, you know, when you experience that, you're like, wow, this is, this is pretty, pretty amazing. And so then that is what drives you to keep going is that feeling, the mm-hmm. good feeling, you know, at first it's like, oh, I'm tired of feeling bad and that can drive you. And then it's like, okay, then the good feeling drives you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I remember a funny experience. I mean, I, um, I always say that I will never be proud of that, but I did have problems with really hard drugs. Um, I went through that and, and I never took it ever, ever again. Um, it was a very terrible experience, but I remember, you know, getting rid of that. And the first mm-hmm. week, first week, two weeks, they were, um, I felt really like crap, but I knew that my body is cleansing. So I had to go through that. And years after that, I remember I, as I said, I quit sugar, caffeine, alcohol, um, processed food, and, um, I remember when how I felt afterwards after getting the, after the detox, and some time ago, uh, like two three months ago, I remember I had a cup of coffee. I had a terrible night. I I had to keep going during the day, so I thought to myself, you know, a cup of coffee will not kill me. I had a cup of coffee. I had this rush of energy, and I remember that energy exactly as I remember cocaine. And I remember that I couldn't sleep for two days. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I had no idea how it was. I had no idea how it was when my body was trying to get rid of that. And by trying to get rid of that, it actually created that energy because this is how caffeine works. It's a, yes. <laughs> it's a pesticide, right? It's a toxin. <laughs> exactly. The body creates that energy because it wants to push it back, push it away. Um, yeah. And I remember that, and I was like, "Oh my God, never again, never ever again." Um, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, I, I think about that now as, as it was funny, but then I'm like, "Wow, two days! I had my sleep was disrupted for two days." Um, yeah, crazy. Anyway, yeah. holy, it's tell me now. You have to experience that a few times to like, oh, okay, I get, I get it. You know, it's like some some people need that reminder a couple of times, and then they're like. Oh, Okay. Yeah. I, I understand. And then, yeah. And then, okay. I learned the lesson. I don't need that anymore. <laughs> yes, yes. You gotta like learn your lesson. So the most important totally. part is not to lose the lesson because then you have to repeat that. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Anyway, um, holy tell us what's cooking. Like what is your big project coming or is there anything? Uh, what are you working on right now? Share something if you want. Um, well, obviously I, I do one-on-one coaching all the time. So that's kind of my consistency um, where I help, you know, women to mm-hmm. one, heal their gut and all the other symptoms that come from, from your, from an unhealthy gut. And I really help people learn how to eat in a way that's right for their body. It's really a personalized approach because there's no two bodies that are alike and help them fit that into their lifestyle in a way that's that's simple and easy. And so they can sustain it because Mm -hmm. it makes no difference if you can only do it for a couple of weeks and then you go back to your old habits. Right. So, Oh yeah, that's, that's what I do. My one-on-one coaching, but, um, I also have a gut health reset that I'm doing. That's going to be coming up probably in two months, but I do have on my website. If you want to get on the wait list, if anyone wants to get on the wait list, they can do that. And I'm also in the process of creating, um, a group program that I'll be launching probably in the fall, um, which is going to bring women together that are all, you know, working on a healthier lifestyle and, um, create a community around it. Because I think Mm. community is so powerful. And I've been in so many groups myself for, you know, business, business coaching, and it's such a huge value. And I think being surrounded by other people who want to improve, only oh yeah process easier you know Mm -hmm. so so yeah so that's that's what I'm up to that's a lot great great awesome yeah Yeah. it's a lot but it's fun and um yeah I love doing it so okay so my last question for you uh Holly um what would you say to your younger version if you met her what would you say to her um, younger version as in like, what age are we talking here? If you were like to meet your, let's say 20 year old version of you. So okay. What would you oh, say to her? Good. Um, I would tell her to take care of her body. Um, 
I think it, at that age, you tend to just assume you're going to have all these, you're going to have good skin, you're going to have a good physique forever. And obviously your habits can, can turn that very quickly. So I would say, you know, take care of your body and what you put in your body, because that affects your mental health. And I would, I would tell her to, to really stay connected with her intuition, with her gut and, and listen to that. Because I think I, I spent a lot of years seeking, well, what, what do you think I should do? Or what do you think I should do before I made a decision? And I didn't listen to my own, Mm -hmm. um, my gut, if you will. And I think that's where many people get steered down the wrong path because they're not listening to themselves and we're too worried about, well, what is so-and-so going to think? And just, I would say, let go of that fear of what other people think or what you think they want you to do and trust yourself. Mm. All comes down to that. Do you think she would listen to you? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, yeah, I know, I know. That's something what I sometimes think about. If I, 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 don't know if she would. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I've always been the type where I've, I love to like, love to hear other people's perspective and I love to learn. And so I think if I had, if it was like, oh yeah, I, I trust this person and they're telling me that I, you know, if I had someone telling me that back then, I probably, I feel like I might would have listened because I didn't have anyone telling me that, mm. you know, when I look back, like no one told me to trust my gut. No one told me, you know, um, to, to trust myself. You know, we, we've kind of been trained to like, ask our parents for this, ask so-and-so what they think. That's kind of how we've been um, conditioned. So, but, so I, I like to think she would have listened to me, <laughs> but, but sometimes uh, I, sometimes I meditate on that question and I really like visualize myself talking to my, like, I don't know, 10, 20 year old me. And, yeah. you know, and I, I'm sometimes, sometimes I get these answers like, yeah, you're my answer. And I will listen to that. And then again, very often I feel this, this feedback from that younger version of me. Yeah, but if I wouldn't do this crap or that, you wouldn't exist. So, you know, be grateful, right? <laughs> That's very true. Yes. Like yeah, our experience you know. has brought us to where we are now. So, yeah. right. There is, that is true that we wouldn't be who we are today without it. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, Holly, it, it was such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm super you. excited. I'm super excited about what my viewers will see and hear in this interview. What will they take with themselves? How how would they really feel about that? And guys, if you want to connect with Holly, the link, I, I'm sorry, the description under the video has all the links to her media. You can check her website, her TikTok, her Facebook, Instagram, and all of that stuff that I will come with. And there's all there. And um, so thank you very much. And I hope we'll see you soon again. Yes, this was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Have a good one.